on the hurricane as we continue to monitor it heading towards the coast there. So notice pressure is right at 980, 980 millibars. At this point, we're not looking at any further intensification with Nicole. But it is a Category 1 hurricane, just barely making uh, that official jump into hurricane status earlier today. Uh, and that's because we saw pressure drop and that allowed the winds to strengthen a little bit. It became more organized throughout the day. Uh, you're noticing it is still moving west northwest at 13 miles per hour. And we are looking at the center of the center, which is about 50 miles out from Fort Pierce. So we're extending it out from land here. Uh, and then you're noticing those winds still sustained at 75 miles per hour. So it just made it when it hits 75 miles per hour into that threshold of being a hurricane. Uh, other things that we want to look at, you can see the outer rain bands, all the convection sits to the north side of the storm. If you're south of it, it is going to be a slightly calmer situation. Doesn't mean to say you're not going to feel anything. You are still going to feel some winds and you're also going to be dealing with some rain. But the worst of the impacts are going to be on the north side. These outer rain bands starting to come in and the threat there is also going to be the threat of seeing some tornadoes. So we are looking at severe weather as well. Uh, here's a look at the watches and warnings. Florida, you are covered in them. So everybody feeling this storm some way or another. You have the hurricane warnings extending through Space Coast into Treasure Coast. So Daytona Beach where we saw that erosion, that significant beach erosion threatening condos, homes, buildings, all the way down through Melbourne, where we had a gust already reported at 60 miles per hour to West Palm Beach, and then the rest of Florida, including all the way over towards Port St. Joe, where we had the tropical storm warning. So once this storm comes on shore and the window now looking like somewhere between 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning, you're going to continue to feel those very strong winds rush throughout the peninsula. Those wind gusts right now, uh, you're noticing Jacksonville, 35 miles per hour there. Take it further south to Cocoa Beach, where we've been checking in with one of our reporters, a gust of 44 miles per hour, and your sustained winds around 30 miles per hour there. And I'm sorry, what was that, Stephen? Patrick Space Force Base. We had a, uh, what was it, a sustained wind? a gust of 62 miles per hour. So when we get to 75, we're now talking about hurricane strength. We're still within that scope of tropical storm force winds, but those winds extend hundreds of miles out from the core of Nicole, which is, makes it a very far reaching storm. We'll transition just oh, a little bit further to the South Melbourne a wind gust, 56 miles per hour there that you're seeing. And that's been averaging right around 60 miles per hour. And even down towards Pompano Beach, we're looking at a gust of 31. Uh, the most intense winds are gonna be closest to the center of Nicole, but it's not that far away. Here is the center right here. When we look at it, again, all of that activity off to the northern side of it, the right side, the dirty side of the storm, that's where you have that threat of thunderstorms where we could see some tornadoes uh, quickly spin up as everything comes on shore in that northeasterly movement. And you're getting that constant push of water as well. Uh, this is where we're going to be really focused in on what transpires over the next few hours. As I mentioned, so you have the center of the storm. And when you take it out from Fort Pierce, it's about 50 miles. When we look at landfall, we'll wait for the official designation from the National Hurricane Center. They're going to be the ones to officially announce that landfall moment. But that's going to come out. I like how Ian drew it earlier. He put a big X in the middle of the center. That's important because the center of the center, that has to actually jump on shore. That's our landfall. You'll noticing that's 50 miles to the, let's see, southwest of Fort Pierce. And when we look at the movement of Nicole, it's moving in that west-northwesterly direction. So it's moving in that way. You have all the winds coming in right there. And that's what's leading to some of that beach erosion, the tide that is going to be several um, raised several feet above where it typically would be. So this is all what we're monitoring. Uh, Stephen in Weather Command pulling up with the radar as we get a better image of it as it continues to push closer to shore here. You're noticing this particular storm right there coming over into Melbourne Beach around 12:28 a.m. So that would be within the next 12 minutes or so into Melbourne Shores, into Evans Pines, uh, into Malabar by 12:31, into Palm Bay shortly after that. Uh, we're watching these storms because as you, it is possible to get some supercells within these bands, and if we see some rotation, you can get some water spouts that have commonly, with a landfall hurricane, when it comes on shore, they can spin up quick and try to sustain on land. And that's why everybody, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you're turning on your Fox notifications through your app should a tornado warning go off. There is even talk at this point to issue a tornado watch as we head further into tonight. But here's the center right here. You can see the worst of the activity off to the north. And again, all of these bands starting to push inland. 
and the worst, the strongest of the winds is going to be coming along with it, Ian. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.